and we're live. Hello, everyone. Um, we're we're still trying to catch our breath after that exciting finish of um, of Coates. I think it was it was just an amazing finish, a great way to finish the the first tournament, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but I want to introduce who we have on our panel today. Um, we have Patricia Hannigan, who is also known as the Golf Girl. And she has a, a blog that she writes called The Golf Girl Diary that's the very popular. And in fact, I wanted to mention this really quick. Um, when I started this up two years ago, when I started Ladies Dream Golf two years ago, Patricia wrote a blog in her Golf Girl Diary. And it really helped me get started. I got a lot of new um, fantasy golfers because of that. So thank you, Patricia. Oh, you're and, so welcome. I enjoy it. And we also have Beth Bethel, who um, Hi, writes her own blog. And she also writes for Pro Golf Now. And of course, we have Alexandra Kasi, our um, very good friend mm -hmm. and a pro golfer on the Symmetra Tour, are all with us. We were hoping that Annette Walker would join us, but um, it could be that her internet's not working. It could be that she's still asleep because it's only 6.30 in Australia. Um, or it could be that she just doesn't want to know who won because she doesn't get to watch the, the end of this until, <laughs> until, until later today for her. So before we get started, I want to do a quick acknowledgement. I have printed this out instead of trying to bring it up on my computer. Our sponsor for Ladies Dream Golf Fantasy uh, Tournament Pick 4 was Utterly Smooth this week. And it was such a blast working with um, with Linda over at Utterly Smooth. And uh, she has provided an amazing gift basket for whoever ends up winning the Pick 4 tournament. So we'll get to that in a little bit. So, um, oh, one quick thing for those of you who are watching, feel free to post comments either on the Google Plus event page or on the YouTube event page. Or if you don't have a Google Plus account or a YouTube Plus account, you can watch on either of those two places and you can post your questions um, to Twitter if you use a hashtag LDG Hangout, all one word. Okay, so let's get started. I'm dying to hear what everyone thinks about the end of the tournament and, well, actually the whole tournament um, itself, but of course the end is freshest on our mind. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let each one on the panel just kind of say a few words. Um, if you want to introduce yourself any more than what I did, feel free to do that. And just kind of let me know, uh, let us all know um, what you think about the new season and the new tournament and the exciting end. So, Patricia, let's start with you. Well, great. I think your introduction was perfect. Um, and, you know, I just, I really enjoyed this tournament. I think the venue was, is just great. I loved the whole idea of the different holes from various different courses, um, the hole that was at Augusta National, and the very, it, was, it was just a visual treat to see those different golf holes, and uh, I just loved seeing this huge gallery. I mean, I think the gallery was very, very enthusiastic, and I think this was, is going to go down as a, a very well-received tournament. And then culminating in that exciting end, um, that was that was just great. Going into it this morning, I sort of thought Lydia, although it's not really her her history, but I thought she might just take off and and kind of make a situation where we would really know what was going to happen, just kind of move on the momentum that was being talked about. But it was it turned out to be so exciting and. Um, just, just you know, the way the LPGA often tends to be, you know, right down the end. I, I enjoyed it very much. Absolutely. Um, hey, Beth, what did you think about it? Well, you know, it was a cliffhanger. I, I was chatting with Alex before we went live, and it was just... Lydia Ko has had trouble closing on Sunday. I mean, I watched it all last year, and she just... She doesn't quite have that close down yet, that, that mental killer thing that, that, for example, Stacey Lewis can turn it on and Envy Park can turn it on. But Lydia Coe's still a 17-year-old good girl, and she's not ready to kill her competitors on Sunday. And we watched it again today. I mean, she did it. 17 just undid her. When, in fact, she could have recovered, really, if, if her killer... If her killer piece had kicked in, I think she could have recovered. 
but she couldn't. I watched her flush. I watched her struggle with that shot on 18 and then flush again. So she's not quite ready. She can come from behind, but she can't close it out from the lead. Uh, th that'll change. Nevertheless, yeah, that's gonna. I think that's gonna change quickly. Yeah, she'll change. Yeah, she'll exactly. learn. But nevertheless, I loved Jang. I loved seeing Jang come forward the way she did, and I thought, wow, the LPGA and its rookies. You know, last year we had a star rookie, and I just have a feeling that we're gonna see some more of Hana Jang before this season is over. She's a great golfer. And I like her attitude. You know, she smiled when she messed up. She smiled when she sank her putts. She just loves playing golf. So it was a pleasure. Today was a pleasure. And 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 uh, Co is number one. And isn't that amazing to have a 17-year-old being number one in the world? And what kind of post am I going to write tonight about the end of Tiger <laughs> and the beginning of Lydia Co? <laughs> <laughs> and what does it mean that the LPGA has been able to produce such an extraordinary golfer in Lydia oh, Coe? Yeah. yeah, that's oh, she's that's what I'm thinking. So, um, Alex, I know you were out playing golf most of the day and working out and all those things that you have to do to be ready to play. But did you catch any? Did you catch any of the tournament? Unfortunately, I didn't really see too much coverage. Um, I did kind of see them going up 18. I had a feeling that. NYC was just going to close it out with the, you know, just the layup and the wedge. But um, I thought the whole concept of, you know, what was behind coats um, was great. Uh, you know, they make all women's clubs and apparel and hats. And they had Alexandria Jacobson. Um, she was uh, sporting the clubs and the, the whole, you know, attire. Um, she got an exemption in, which I thought that was just great for women's golf. Um, I also thought it was good to have a tournament uh, in Ocala. Uh, because a lot of uh, you know pros make their home here in Florida. Unfortunately, it was a little cold. You just never know. Uh, you know, quite a bit north north of me. So, you know, they had those 30s in the morning. It's too bad. You know, they couldn't have had a little bit later in the season. But, um, you know, I I had a good feeling about Hana Jang too. Um, she played really well at Q School um, when I was there. She was leading four of the five rounds, and she's just a you know she's got a lot of fire, got a lot of pop. Um, she gets it out there for. You know, I mean, she's strong, but she's not real tall. And uh, I just thought it was nice to see her come out and play well, having a Monday qualifier. It must be kind of tough being 21st in the world and having to go through a Monday qualifier. Um, but, uh, you know, she did it. So I think she's one to, one to watch this year. And I also was wondering how Lydia Coe's switch from uh, glasses to contacts was going to go because I, I had to wear glasses a few times last week, and it's so much different uh, than wearing my contacts, but it looks like she adjusted quite well. So, is it? Do you think is it harder to go from contacts to glasses, or glasses to contacts? I think contacts to glasses. I used to wear glasses in high school, but I've been wearing them for twelve plus years. My contacts and going back to glasses, you know, you have about that half inch from your eye to the glasses, and it really makes a difference in perception, especially putting. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I think it was probably a probably a good a good thing for her. She said she wants to do LASIK uh, eventually, so. It's probably probably a good thing that she switched now. Yeah, well, you know, a um, couple of things that 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 I noticed and that I was paying attention to is number one, I they pretty it seemed more than normal. They only showed the last group. There was a lot of good golf going on that I really wanted to see, mm -hmm. and I saw that Amy Yang started out her her first hole of the day was a triple bogey, and then she she got five birdies after that and she actually ended up let me check real quick she ended up in fifth place That's amazing. so yeah she started with a triple bogey then got five birdies and then got um, a bogey I would have liked to see her play a little bit and then of course Jessica Corda just kind of quietly went about her business and almost tied the almost almost put her in, herself in position to win which I thought was crazy because no one was really talking about her on the TV coverage most of the day until the very end 
So that was, that was one of, I'll, I'm going to bring up a comment from one of our listeners. This is cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to show this. Can you tell me, you guys tell me if you see this. Can you see that comment? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this is from Colette. She's one of our fantasy golfers. Happy for NYC. Such a nice young lady with one of the prettiest and uh, easy and kind of nonchalant swings. Looks so effortless. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but isn't that true of Lydia Ko, too? Seems like yeah. it's a common thing with the Asians. Their rhythm is, that's what I've always said, it's impeccable. They can repeat that same rhythm over and over and over. Yeah, how do they, I mean, they make it just look easy. It looks like, well, I should be able to do that because it looks just easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not forcing anything. They say, you know, Lydia Ko grips down on a lot of uh, clubs and, you know, uh, Goes for more clubs. That way, you know you can you don't have to swing out of your shoes. Never looks like she forces anything. Why is that, Alex? Why does she grip down on her club instead of just clubbing down? Well, Judy Rankin said it was more out of habit, but um, it gives you more control. Um, you know, you can you know if the shot's really an eight iron, but it's really a you know full out eight iron, maybe you can grip down on a seven, and you know that's why they have that look of finesse. They're not ever trying to force. Mm -hmm. You know, get every yard out of the club. You can grip down. Mm -hmm. you, can change, you can change your yardages like that too. So, could be why. And that's so. I think that's so hard for um, the casual golfer to do. It's so counterintuitive, you know, to go yeah. easy. It's just so counterintuitive. You know, it's my most important swing thought as a casual, very high handicap golfer is try not to try to kill the ball and try to take it easy. And I use these Asian gals as a sort of a, a role model in a way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the mind that <laughs> have to train. <laughs> so Beth, is your is your are your little wheels inside your head just turning about what you're going to write about tonight? Can you share some of that with us? One of the things I want to write about is um, the the emergence of a youth culture inside the LPGA. I mean, Corda was talking about it a little bit at the end of the, uh, the round in her mm -hmm. interview, and. And I really, I, I'm not, I, I haven't really formed it fully, but I think there's an emerging youth culture, young golfers under 20, 21, and what that means, because, you know, Stacy Lewis has talked, among others, but stacy has been the most vocal, about the importance of college. She and Michelle, we have both been very articulate about the importance of college as a maturing period for their golf. And collegiate golf programs have always been an important part of, of the LPGA tradition. And yet right now, we're looking at a, a young cohort who's bypassing college, or appears to be. And so I'm going to kind of dip into that later this evening and, and see what comes out. Of course, you know, one never knows what's going to come out once one starts to write. Isn't that the way it works for you, Patricia? You oh, don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> stories, stories can take on a life of their own very quickly. <laughs> yes, 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 they can. But I do want to touch on this age issue. Something interesting that you also said about Tiger, and then you know what happened to him this weekend versus um, Lydia Ko, for example. I saw on Twitter so many guys, casual golfers, who were saying, "Oh, guess what? You know, I've I've scored better than Tiger on on this, or you know, I I, I can play better than Tiger. I, I could play that." Whole better than Tiger. Um, you just had to ask them, what about Lydia Ko? <laughs> and I think the answer would have to be definitely no there. <laughs> that was kind of interesting. The fact that they were comparing themselves to Tiger. <laughs> and these are the casual golfers. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of the um, people that I've met through this fantasy golf. Um, there's a there's actually a large number of men who who play this game. In fact, I think there's probably more men who play Lady Stream Golf than women. And I really want to get some of those guys on here. So if there's any of you guys listening, I would love for you to join our hangouts. We're not trying to be the exclusive women's club here. Um, we really would like to have some some guys join us. But I've had many many of those guys say that the reason they're such fans of the LPGA is because they can relate to these women. Their games are more similar to the women than the men. And so they can kind of watch and learn 
and, uh, and actually relate to how they play. So that, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm multitasking here, by the way. I don't know if you guys notice. I'm trying not to make it too obvious. Um, I'm trying to see if I can post the results real quick, at least preliminary results. Um, it takes me a while to actually get everything completely finalized because I run everything in my test environment before I actually go and post results. So um, I was going to try to work on that, but that might be a little bit too much for me. <laughs> I, might, I think I might just post the results at the end. What's that? You're doing a very graceful job with it all, I've got to say. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of knew who was going to win when I thought I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> but then everything at the end got all blown up. And so it's with, with three people, was it three people tied for second? Um, that throws off the score. That throws off my estimates a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait. Um, but I did want to mention... Um, that we played Make the Cut for the first time um, in history um, for this tournament. And uh, I was really surprised by the number of entries we got. We had 171 entries, which I was oh, just wow. really happy about. I mean, in my wildest dreams, I thought I was hoping that we would get that many. Um, but we got 171, which ended up raising about $850. And um, you subtract the 250 out for the, the actual prize that's going to go to the winner. That means, I don't know, help me with my math. Is that $600? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So $600 to Alex. And I know that's, that's a, a drop in the bucket um, for all the expenses that you have, Alex. Um, that's but my membership fee. I ju I'm just able to pay my membership fee for the Symmetra Tour, so that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, it was kind of fun to do it in a way that we that people get to do something fun and actually contribute towards, um, you know, towards this cause that we have. But the surprising thing, and this, this is kind of going back to the tournament, um, the surprising thing were some of the cuts for this tournament. Um, the, the two most surprising for me were was Julieta Granada uh -huh. and Chela Choi um, because both uh -huh. of those women are just impeccable when it comes to, to not missing the cut. And so a lot of people got zapped <laughs> because of those two players. I know a lot of people thought Suzanne Pedersen was surprising, but I wasn't as surprised by Suzanne Pedersen as I was by Chella Choi and Julieta. What do you guys think? I got Chella zapped Choi. by Chella. Chella. Chella failed me. She absolutely failed me. <laughs> Uh, it was just a shocker, a total shocker that she got cut. Um, but Julieta, did you know Julieta only missed one cut last year? Wow. And uh, she played in 28 tournaments. So. But, you know, it's it's early in the season. Did you see Michelle Wee's tweet? Did you for see what? Michelle Wee's her, Michelle Wee's tweet yesterday about... No, um, I didn't see it. Oh, it was hysterical. In fact, I put it in a post. It was so funny. Moments of sheer yeah. brilliance and absolute stupidity. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> what is she so bad? You know, she, she posted this hysterical tweet that said she summed up her rant as moments of brilliance and absolute stupidity. She was just really <laughs> disgusted with herself. But it's early in the season. It's the first, rant, first tournament back. And it was cold and, and wet. And it was cold and wet, and yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Here, I'm going to bring up a, speaking of the guys that I was just mentioning, this is one, uh, this is Daryl has a question, and uh, Daryl was one of my very first fantasy golfers, the first year that I, that I started this, and I was out recruiting people however I could, you know, I was just, anybody that was posting anything about golf, I was like, come join us, come join us. And Daryl was like, I ah, probably won't be very good, but okay, I'll try. And he, he's just been great. Let's see what Daryl has to say. Yes, I like to watch the LPGA as they hit the ball around the same distances as I do. So it makes me watch how they play or pick apart a course. The guys just hit the balls too far, and it's not fun for me to watch a bomb and wedge game. 
I have to agree. Well, Daryl, if you're hitting as far as the women, you're doing pretty darn good as far as I'm concerned. Heck yeah, so I can't hit it that far. <laughs> In my wildest dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I play with a little lady golf. <laughs> I actually got to play around with Alex. Have I told you guys about that? Oh no, I'd like to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to give too many details because I it was so sad um, because I guess I just got really nervous and I could not <laughs> hit the ball. Fine. But when you're standing right next to a person who can play the way that Alex can play and you see that, I mean, you just don't get, even, even being in a gallery, you know, at a live event, yeah. you don't quite get it as when you're standing right next to them. And... Um, and her caddy, Paul, was playing with us as well, who, he's an accomplished golfer as well. Oh, how far does he hit it, Alex? It was like, oh my uh, god. He can hit it like 330, 340. He can get it out there. He's a big boy. Yeah, but that was that was probably about the most fun experience I've ever had. I wish I would have, I wish I would have played. You like lines you'd never even imagined, like over the trees and stuff. <laughs> We were playing at our little local course here, and uh, oh, it, it was so much fun. Were you going to say something, Patricia? Well, just every time, you know, I talk to anyone who, or I read about anyone who has played with um, gals from the Symmetra Tour, the LPGA Tour, uh, they're always, it's just mind-boggling to, to them how well they play, you know. It's just on such a different level from anything we casual golfers ever see in real life, you know? So um, definitely hard to imagine unless you're out there on the tee with someone the difference, you know, and what you can learn from them. Yeah, absolutely. So, Alex, we're going to have to play again sometime after I've, <laughs> after I've gotten over my nerves, but I've, got, I've been playing a little bit better lately, so. Um, oh, I thought you were fine. <laughs> So um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the upcoming tournament, um, the Pure Silk Bahamas next week. Um, that was that has historically at least at least the last couple of years it's been the first tournament of the year, yeah. and now it's the second tournament of the year um, where Jessica Corda won last year, and she's looked pretty good today. What do you guys think about next week? How about you, Beth? Uh, I, I think Stacy Lewis and Jessica Corda are gonna come out of the gate wanting to win. I'm, I'm looking for hot golf next week. Who are you going to pick for Make the Cut? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've got a lot of choices because I'm playing many people right now. I think Chella Choi knocked out one of my eBethel players, but I believe I have seven left. So... <laughs> How did you do, Patricia, by the way, on Make the Cut? I think all your players made it. I, I was looking, I was trying to, I was going back and forth, and I think they all made it. I was really sort of surprised because, you know, I think I'm like a lot of people who watch uh, professional golf. We m notice who wins and we notice who's defending and that type of thing, but we don't always look at the consistency, you know, and how uh, many times some, like sometimes I'll, I'll read a statistic or see a statistic, someone's made the cut, like, ten times in a row and it's just something I, I don't really notice so I was going a little bit on guesswork but I think I guessed fairly well this time yeah so, I, you did good you know I took down I had took down the stats from last year <laughs> to make it look a little bit more challenging because yeah. um, I honestly I honestly thought this game was going to be really really easy um, mm -hmm. but 33 of the entries have already been eliminated 33 out of 171 Oh my God! You may have to make it a challenge. You may have to open it up and let us re-enter, Kelly. I mean, you don't want us no. to all stop playing just because we guessed bad. <laughs> well, I set. want you to start refining your strategy as we go along. You have it. <laughs> Some of us might need second chances. <laughs> so, Alex, where are you going to be next week? Are you still going to be? Um, Practicing there in Florida? Yeah, I'll be here in Lake Mary. Um, the plan is to uh, be heading out west on the 15th 
uh, to hopefully play my first two events. So yeah, I should be around to catch some coverage. But I wish I was going to the Bahamas. Uh, yeah. I know a couple a couple girls are actually going to Monday qualify, but that's a kind of an expensive trip just to Monday qualify. But uh, I know a couple that are doing it. So um, yeah, I'll be watching. I think uh, I'm with Beth on Jessica Corda. Um, she just seems she started off hot and uh, she won there last year, so she probably has good feelings about that course. Yeah, yeah, I would think so, and and I guess historically she's a good, she's a good beginning of the season player. I can't yeah, remember sure. the stat, but um, she showed that today for sure. Um, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, I know what to say. Um, so next week uh, for the pick four, let me get my piece of paper again. I have a new sponsor. Players Towel <laughs> is our sponsor. For, for next week, and I gotta say, I'm so excited to have sponsors to have prizes um, for our tournaments. It it just adds an extra dimension, and Alex has been so great about helping me find these sponsors. She found Utterly Smooth for me, and she found Players Towel. And um, for those of you who don't know about Players Towel, um, the guy who owns and runs that place used to be a professional caddy, and he knows he knows what a good towel needs to be, you know, when you're out there on tour, and I guess the towel is just amazing. You use it, right, Alex? Yeah, yeah. Um, it uh, has, like, a texture to it that's really good at getting the dirt out of the grooves, um, and then he personalizes it. Like, he's actually done a picture of uh, myself and my dogs on it, and you can get all kind of, like, little logos, and, you know, it's fun to pick your colors, so I think that'll be a really neat prize for, for next week. You get to design your own towel. So Yeah, absolutely. So, so Beth, I'm sorry you didn't get the other bowl. Which I just want to, I just want to show Oh that. my god, you're gonna show the bowl again. Oh my Look god. Look at this other bowl. Oh it's no, I can't amazing. believe it. And you know what's so cool about that. it, Beth? <laughs> it's got these little rubber tips, so when you sit when you set it down, it does you know, it doesn't scratch or you know, it's really cool. Do you know I went online and tried to figure out a way to buy one of those darn things and I can't Find one. I am desperate to get an Utter Bowl. I hope Utterly Soft is watching this. When's your birthday, will, Beth? <laughs> my birthday's in August. <laughs> Linda's watching. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. That reminds me. Hold on. Um, doo -doo -doo. I think birthday... I think birthday wishes are in order for Patricia. Her birthday is tomorrow, yeah. if I'm correct. Ooh. And tomorrow. <laughs> Are you, are you impressed like that? What's that? My, my birthday present will be a Patriots win. I know people don't want to hear that, but. <laughs> so, um, and also, I'll just throw this out, little tidbit out. Patricia, you have a twin sister, right? I do, an identical twin. And I have an identical twin sister as well. Oh. Well, hopefully you and your sister can be in the tournament. My sister and I are trying to organize a twins tournament. So oh, uh, let us know for sure. Well, my sister doesn't play. <laughs> you know what? In this tournament that we're arranging, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, that will keep me in to keep me up to date on that. I so know. I guess we're going to wrap this up. But I want to give each of you a chance to say something before we before we check before we uh, say goodbye. If you have anything else you want to throw out there, um, Alex, do you have any final yeah. thoughts? Yeah, I just want to say thanks to everybody that did make the cut. Um, that's just for the first time that we tried doing a money portion to this game. Uh, you know, I'm just beyond blown away um, by all the entries, and that really helps me out. I mean, you know, six hundred dollars is six hundred dollars, and like I said, my membership fee for the Symmetra Tour is four hundred, and I'm able to send that in now. Um, thanks to all of you that that played, and I think we're in for a really, really special season with the uh, you know the prizes this year. Um, it's been fun. Uh, you know, finding them. So I um, hope you enjoy yourself in 2015. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. How about you, Beth? Are you, are you, are you going to get to work now? Yeah, I'm going to get to work now. Thank you for doing this, Kelly. This is always a good thing. Absolutely. And I want to say that I, I'd like to try to do these after all the tournaments. So anybody who's watching, it's really easy to participate. Um, the main thing is you have to have a Google Plus account to participate. But um, you, you, you probably can't even tell this, but Patricia's actually on her cell phone right now, so you don't actually have to have any kind of fancy setup to do this. So, Patricia, do you have any final thoughts? 
Well, you know, I'll just be looking forward to the remainder of the season and hope to be in on a lot of these chats. I look forward to reading um, Liz's blog, a best blog, and um, to watching um, Angela play. It's going to be hopefully a really good season. All right. Well, thanks so much, and you're welcome anytime. All of you are welcome anytime. Those of you on the panel right now and those of you watching, um, you know, be part of this and, and help us help us make this a, a fun thing for everyone. So thanks everyone for being here and we're gonna sign off. Good night. Good night. Bye.